I shall not. Look at the last word, want. Somebody say want. The word want means lack. So what he's really saying to me, what David is really saying, because Jesus is my shepherd, I won't need anything. How many of y'all want to get to a place that you know that Jesus got you so much that you don't need nothing in 2023? Will they cry out to God and say, you are a burden lifter. God, you are my shepherd that I don't want for anything. God, you are the head. And I'm not the tail. You are the lifter up of my head. That's how you know and find out about me. I heard the Lord say in my spirit, this is an unshakable house. Mark the fourth chapter, verses 35. I heard one of the songs from the beginning saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, He said, yes, on that Lord. day, how many of you say yes to God on the day? When oh, evening oh, had come, he said to oh, them, Father, let us so go across to the other side. Your love and your kindness and your mercy being new. You're going to have to learn to tell the Thank mind you, God, for loving us and those strongholds of the mind. Thank you for being here. It's time for me to change. I'm not going to be one of those saints where I'm on fire for God two months and, God, we thank and then the fire is gone out for the next six months. You've got to make a change in your mind and your heart. You got to we do it from your praise. soul, which is what? Your glory. mind, your honor. will, and your emotions. Stop praise. letting your feelings dictate to you. That you can continue to do. He Father said, God, let us go this, across we say, to the other side. You. We adore you and thank you for being God. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and all the boats were with him. Amen. So when you know that there's some All change right, you may come, be seated. you got God to tell that you. Amen. stinking Thank you thinking for being here. You no longer on this live morning. here. I'm serving so notice on you. you. I'm evicting you are here this morning. We, we're glad through the power of the coming. Holy Spirit if you're noticing that there's some from my that mind are generally here, but are not regardless here. of the Look hurt around. So we got work Regardless of what is going on, what has happened, not here. Again, not you've got to tell yourself it's time for a change. Call text, let them know we, we miss you on today. Amen. Let's not be selfish. Your Let's actions selfish. won't change until your mind does. Remember, this is all about God and it's all for his glory. So um, your actions won't change until your mind story. does. Uh, you're going to have to take some notes. Okay. So you got the authority because God said, again, the out, weapons of your warfare are not carnal. So you, you should be Jesus. using the Amen. spiritual weapons like that God Jesus. has equipped you with. Hold on, a few people's hands. Ah, so yeah. he said, let us go across yeah, to the other side. With both hands. Got both and hands. a great like windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into so the I boat so that the boat was morning. already feeling. But he was in the stern asleep <laughs> on the cushion. It's the word of God. It comes without nothing but a surrender. And they woke him up and said to him, teacher, spirit do you not care that we are perishing? I'm giving you everything about me. And he awoke so I want to go to and rebuked off, and the wind about from and said to the sea, the second Sunday peace, of June, I started a message be still. Emotional strongholds. And the wind ceased. And, ever since that message and, before, and there was I a great calm. Strongholds manifested. Two things happened greater in that never. verse. So this is part two. Emotional in verse 39, comes with the mind. he rebuked that's the wind. Emotional strongholds develop. The second thing the he spoke said, if you can go to the condition. The notes from June 11th, that was this year. On when strongholds, strongholds in the mind capture some of those thoughts. Lead Remember, to emotional strain. Have no intellect. You got smart. a choice to keep entertaining them. Because they have to borrow information 
from your or thoughts. Or cast them down. So emotional strongholds. But Jesus. I really kind of, I'll use this word. It's a strong word. They're kind of rebuked. Dumb. Because they don't the know where to get information from unless they Those get it from strongholds need to recognize who lives inside of you. Mind. Okay. How dare you as we'll men and women scripture. of God allow go these ahead. emotional we'll the battles and strongholds to keep chapter. winning and God we'll sit on the sideline like he is not devices. nothing. The devil is a liar. And I want to start at 24th verse. He rebuked 2 Corinthians 11, the wind. 24. And here is the he apostle He spoke Paul. to the condition. Listen carefully. Read along with me. From the and Jews, when he did, five times the wind and the sea the became the Jews, subject the, um, to the power and, and the authority and of God's Son. Do you not realize, again, greater Five times is he that's in the you of the Jews, the 40 lashes than he so that's in the world? One is what? You have greatness Three times that lives inside of you. Stop Once listening to your feelings Three telling you and from others speaking to you, you ain't nothing. You'll never be nothing. Your Verse mama wasn't nothing. Your daddy wasn't nothing. You're going to act just waters, like them. You need to begin to speak to that spirit that's operating to them. You the need to know that it's not the sea, person that you're dealing with. It's the spirit that's the operating sea, inside of that person. And when Verse you begin to pray, don't look at me like that, y'all. And sleeplessness, often in hunger and thirst, and you need to begin often, to pray. And cold and nakedness, because you Besides know the other who is things, greater what inside comes of you. upon me daily, my deep concern for all. He has churches. given you the authority. Then he said, who is weak? Which and means not the weak? right who is to command. To and do not, the right uh, do to not give order to. Do not burn with indignation. And all if you I need to boast, do is again know that things Jesus lives inside of you because the if the Son of God Jesus Christ, who was spoke forever, to the elements I am not and they obeyed Listen, the Son of God, take heed. you're greater here than the elements. God you're greater God. than the birds. You're greater than Jesus. creation. Because God has made you above creation. Cold. So you need naked, to do like Jesus and then on top did. Of that, had to look after the churches. Stop fighting. But do you in ever the flesh see anywhere in these passages that all these the emotional spirit. things that was happening to him? Does it ever say in this passage that he turned his back? He rebuked on God? the wind. No way. So he with all the stuff that the Paul condition. went through, he could have easily have allowed his emotions to get the best You're of here? him. He could have easily succumbed to There's the nakedness, to the beating, the to the stripes, to being lost at There's sea, a being shipwrecked, tug of war, and then looking after the churches on all, all, all of that. With he could have easily just said, "I can't do this and the no spirit. more." But how many of us, when we get to that emotional the flesh state is of a breakdown, because it wants you to be that we give up on God. God, we throw our hands up and we say, and "I can't do this no more." I don't know what's going on with me. What you says, have allowed you is your emotional to become a stronghold, which means fortified. So which of the two, it's a military fortress to build up in your minds where you begin to. Block out the word of God Anything and you begin to receive longevity, all the negativity. Longevity. Develop roots. So remember I said from the beginning that Anything emotional that has strongholds, that strongholds roots. are not smart. You plant So when you tree, start building you thoughts in your plant, mind, it starts feeding your emotions. Because it's in Now we know as a body... Anything that, that we'll build roots, up, what we're made of, what body, we become soul, and what hope. spirit. So when we talk about the body, once the body is relates planted, to his creation, and when we talk about the soul, the soul relates soil, to God earth, and creation. And when we talk about the spirit, strong, it relates the to same him. Thing happens but when Christians don't the make the right choices, and you heard some messages previous about bad decisions. You keep feeding 
Bad decisions will cause you to get into those emotional strongholds where you begin to take everything out on somebody near you. What's somebody done to me? So I'm going to talk church, God and everything else. Because of the bad choices and the bad decisions we made. So as we make these bad choices and we make these choices, you got to remember that these are soulless decisions and not and spiritual the more, decisions. The roots and when you talk about deeper, the soul, what is the soul? It becomes the mind, will, and the emotion. What does the mind do? It think. What does the will do? It has a desire. And what does the emotion do? Feel. It's dealing with you. So when you say, I don't feel it today, and you're saying, God, because of what I'm dealing with or because of what I've gone through or be because totally of what has happened to me, I don't feel it. Then the stronghold of, of the mind, mind becomes evident and it begins to do the thinking exactly. for you. So now, instead of you who is a praiser and a worshiper and a one that say, God, I, I'm, I'm giving you everything. I'm giving you my best. Now, none of that matters because of what you feel. But you just you believe feel yourself. Take your hand and for you. rub Let's your hand on yourself. You rub your today. hands on your hand. Why don't you take a Come on, stand. just put it on your thigh. Just feel, feel you feel Come yourself. On, from that seat and, say, I'm, I'm and because okay, you're not feeling message. it, now God it's deserves to get less. Me on today. Am I right? Come on now, up. the bad choice that you may have made, and you know Sunday. Is worship Sunday morning? Come on up, worship. come up with your deliverance already. So a bad decision said, that you made to say, you when we're, "I'm just going to stay up and, and stay out all night." It's presented he now said, because of the decision and the, and the choice, the bad choice that you made healed. to stay out. See yourself already now. You can't delivered. get up on Sunday morning. See that you are already defeated. Come on, you might as well say amen. Let's go there, let's go there, let's be and honest. Setback. Or you don't went out and See you did stuff that you know you can do it. Now you're feeling Thank you. what? guilty and, and that shame done is there. You can but then you got to come again. to the conclusion. So I want you to come up all the ready to surrender don't take your spirit. control of you. Come on, you do what? You take control let of them. Let me go and say, God, I know that there's nothing and to I, I, you. And I heard and I've read that in I'm giving it out of the mind you can where George Murray begins to say, you're Straight there, up, come on, there's more of you. Don't, don't come up. Yes, you have it. Those I want you to come up already but she said, All we're God doing is you sealing your, emotion, your freedom for you to manage we're sealing and not your victory. So you come up Am already right? saying, God, so I thank you. I'm already free. Because oh, again, your word says he who the son is made you. free is free indeed. Yes, Lord. I want the you to break says, the spirit of religion. I'm the the religious you spirit, what? you know that you need some healing in your mind. Come on up and say, God, titles don't matter at this point. Your deliverance matters more than anything. Let's read the entire. God, we thank you. That they come with their right. hands, encourage it up, and, and act up totally surrendering. The more Jesus. as you see the drop, the day. God, I give it all up to you. Yes, Lord. The church. I want y'all to be as serious as you can about this. Stuff. The there are God people up here that together. really come up here that really want to be free. And come so those who said have got you up to healing, your deliverance, and you're free, I need y'all just to touch and agree with those that are up here praying that they're already healed, they're already delivered. Come on. It on. So as they're being anointed, God, we thank you for the power of the right reasons. And those emotions, Start we thank you up. on today, God, and, then when you and we decree come. and declare that none of us will leave out the same way we came in. So those of you that are here, that stand in here, lift up those hands. And, and again, I want you to open your mind to know that this is your day of victory. Yes, Lord. This is your day of freedom. And so no your abundance mechanism. No more change. Nothing holding me. Face, the stern face. I give it all. Go ahead, first the line. Face Come on. That says, Come on. As they're singing, I want you to get ready. I want you to get ready.
I want you to get ready. You see my expression. You see what's on my face. You see my body language. I'm all buffed up and tensed up. And I just don't want to be bothered with nobody today. But the church should be the place where it says we should be one encouraging one another. But you got to be careful with some of the saints in the church. That who you hanging around with and who you trying to be with, and instead of them encouraging you, they pushing you on to more foolishness. And when you got saints like that that are encouraging you to more foolishness, you better be careful of your mind and if you're ready to go where they're going. Because them strongholds begin to build in your mind that will make you get to the point, and this is a funny one, that it makes you want to run out of the house Naked, strip with your thumb in your mouth. <laughs> it makes you stir crazy because now that stronghold has built up in your mind and you're running for your life. And you trotting around. And then before you know it, that stronghold's going to catch up with you and it's going to pin you down. So when the mind is not built up, when the mind is not strong, when he said, I will keep you in what kind of peace? Perfect. Perfect peace. Now, the word perfect there means the word complete, full peace. I will keep you in complete peace. Those whose minds are stayed on me because you do what? Trust in the Lord. Let let me tell you something. When you have faith and you don't have the truth behind faith, if faith is not infused with the truth, it builds strongholds in your mind. So you can have all the faith you want, but if you don't have the truth, the word of God said we would know the truth or you would know the truth and the truth would do what? Make you free. But I need to know if there's some free people in here or if there's some people that are bound that says I want to be free on today. I, I, I need to hear the truth on today. And you can say it's stepping on your toes. So if it hurts, you're going to have to say, ouch, or take your shoes off, or do something and say, hey, the take the, it, it, it's a little too hot in here. You got to calm down and let the air cool you down because the truth is a matter of the fact that, God, I want to be free. Now, you say that you're free, but you got to really want to be free because there's a lot of people that come to church and they say, God, I come and I want to be free, but the evidence of looking at some of them doesn't show signs that they want to be free. But I need to know that there's some people of God that say no matter how the enemy comes in at me, no matter what he tries to do, if he tries to make me back down because somebody here today that came that and said, okay, this is my best friend. I don't want them to see, them, them see me crying. I don't want them to see me lifting up my hand. So when the truth comes, you said, forget friends. You said, uh-uh, God, I, I got to get a praise in right now. That's the one that say... That's the one that say, Satan may say, boo, but then you can say, I ain't scared of you. You can turn around and say, God, I come for one thing. I come to praise you. I come to serve you. And no matter what the circumstance is, so if we can get more saints of God, more believers, more authoritative people to stand up and say, God, I want the truth, regardless if it hurts me, regardless if it don't feel good, regardless if it feel like it's stepping on my toe. That got to be the people that walk in and say, God, I'm walking in with my hands up saying, God, surrender all. I'm walking in, standing up straight. So when you want the truth uh, and you come in all bent down and you can't be free, then the word of God comes in like a flood. It's going to make you stand up straight. It's going to make you bold. It's going to make you courageous. 
It'll get you to the point uh, when you're free, you're looking around and say, God, I want somebody else to be free. So then you're going to get them. You're going to get them, and you're going to get them free. But when those emotional strongholds... When a stronghold, and listen to the word, stronghold. I want you to hear that word. Close your eyes for a second and say stronghold. Say it again. Stronghold. Say it one more time. Stronghold. So when the stronghold, which is exactly what it is, it's a stronghold. It's something that doesn't want to what? Let you go. So that thing will begin to fight and hold on. And it's almost like you're in a wrestling match with your emotions. So one week you can come in on fire and you can prophesy the house down and you can praise them till you jump out of your shoes. Then the next week you come in, it's as if God was not here. Why? Why? Because the battlefield in our minds and that stronghold is doing exactly what it's meant to do. Hold on strong. Then you begin to wonder why when you see everybody else praising God and you were once a praiser that you can't get your praise on. You can't worship Free. It's not that God is not here. Oh, he meet us here. He, he's here. Do you believe that? God is here. But it's you because there's a battle in the mind with your emotions. So if you're here today and you know that there are some battlefields and there are some emotional strongholds going on in your mind and within you. The battle, James even talks about, and we're not going to go to that. I think James, the fourth chapter, talks that when does wars and fightings come, come to you? He said, isn't it because of your own battles? There's some stuff that's going on within yourself. So just picture yourself battling and boxing with a stronghold. If you're not equipped as a boxer or any athlete, and since I use the terminology boxing, my dad used to box. So when he was physically strong for that position to box, if you're not in a position to fight strongholds, guess what's going to happen? T-K what? There it is. So you in the boxing ring, you see your mind standing there, thoughts going through the mind, and there it is. It's jabbing. Uppercut. It's hitting. It's boxing. To the nose, to the face. Before you know it, you're going to have knots and blood all over everywhere because the emotional stronghold, but that's what exactly emotional strongholds do. It takes the life out of us. It knocks us down for the count. And here the referee, one, two, three, and you, you're trying to get up, but you can't get up. So here your mind has got its foot on you, and you're struggling to get up and say, I'm not going to let you get up. Remember, you're not feeling it today. No, you're going through this. Somebody that said that. So you're going to keep my foot. You're going to keep that foot on it. So the mind said, I'm not going to let you get up from here. Because if you get up here, then you're going to be victorious. 
So if you know that you're going to be victorious today, I need you just to make some noise. I need you Emotional strongholds happen. Your thoughts are entangled. Mm -hmm. Let me do this demonstration. I'm going to just call a few people. Come in, Michelle. I'm going to use you. Kanye, you got those? Okay. I want to use this as demonstration. I want you to put this scarf on, the backwards, and then, you know, just like this. But I want you to keep it loose to turn around. Come here, Crystal. Come here, Jonathan. No, 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 I'm sorry. Jonathan, I'm sorry. We, we, I, since it's a female, I'm going to do this right. Hold this and just hold that right there. Let me have the other one, sweetheart. <laughs> Thank you. Um, come here, Brittany. Come here, Chandra. Okay, stand right there. Okay, kind of make that loose around your neck. Kind of loose, yeah. And come here, Kamika. Okay, so turn around. Here you have, hold that. Come down, Krista, please. Here you have a stronghold. And I want you to step out just a little bit. There you go. And when you have a stronghold, this is something that is gripping you. It's almost as if you're asphyxiating yourself. You're strangling yourself with your own feelings, with your own emotions. And when fear, so when I say fear, Crystal, I want you to take fear on her. Fear. It's okay. Fear is a deliberating danger and doom. Confusion. Take confusion on her. Confusion, double-minded, and restlessness. Uh. Anger. Agitation, frustration. Move out a little further. What you have? Despair. Makes you believe life is not worth living. So when you have a stronghold, take either one of them back again. It's as, as if, I'm sorry, baby. Give, who, okay, I'm sorry, give that. It's as if this thing is around your neck. And any time despair tighten, loose, come tight, tighten it up. It loose, it becomes tight. Anytime fear, tighten it up even more. Anytime anger, anytime confusion, tighten it up. Anytime I give you, I want you to tighten it up. And the more you tighten it, yeah, yeah. you see what's happening? Yeah. You're choking yourself. Yeah. These are emotions, your feelings, because of what you're dealing with. <laughs> and when you hear the truth, look what happens. Truth, anger falls off. Truth, fear falls off. Truth. Despair falls off. True. Confusion falls off. Then the note, the loop began to loosen. Because now you're hearing the truth. And now you can breathe. So anytime strongholds, thank y'all. Anytime strongholds take a hold of you, it is if you're choking your own self. 
your hand is around your throat. But in other words, your hand is around your feelings, your thoughts, your emotions. And this thing is just sucking the life out of you. And the wonder when we come to church, a lot of us come to church, we can't be excited about God. We can't get excited about church. We can't excited about, get excited about praising God. It's because the life of those emotions, the stronghold, has what? Sucked all of the life out of you. And it's just as, a, it, it, and if you look at it this way, another clear way, what does a python do? It sucks, and anytime it feels its prey, Breathing is what? Constricts. It begins to what? Tightens up even greater. And the more it feels life, strongholds, the more it feels life, the more it begins to suck the breath out of you. And guess what the breath is? It's the ruach. It's the breath, wind, the spirit of God. So when the spirit of God is in you, it pulls everything out of you. And then you're left for nothing. You can't do anything that will contribute to the presence of God. Then you wonder why, begin to wonder why you can't rest at night. A lot of you have gone to the doctor and you've had evaluations or examinations and the doctor says, see nothing wrong with you. Breathing is fine. Blood pressure is fine. Weight is good. There's nothing wrong. Nothing that he cannot see with the physical eye. But there is something there that God knows and you know but the doctor can't figure it out. So Paul begins to say forsake not. So so there's some of us just cannot afford not to be in church. Let's make this real. Amen. It's it's dangerous. It's dangerous. You have to know your tolerance and your limitation. And your tolerance and limitation says that "Mm, you don't you don't need to miss church this Sunday. Mm, uh, No, that's not a good idea for you to, you know, go have brunch and lunch and and breakfast with a close friend that just came out of town, bring them to church with you. You start telling them, you start telling them Sunday morning, I go to church. Now, if you want to do lunch or dinner afterwards, we can do that. But Joshua said, it's for me and my house, and you come to stay with me, you come to church, baby. There is no if, ands, and buts about it. No staying in the bed. No, 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 no. We go to church. When you know your limitation, when you know that skipping one Sunday is going to have an effect on you and you know that you're already an emotional... Let let me say this too. Strongholds do not have gender preference. This is not just a lady's condition. And we hear it say a lot of time that women are what? Emotional. So are men. There are some. Yes. Yes, there are some men that are emotional. Amen. Can the church say amen? There are some men that are also emotional. That you can't say nothing to them. You can't tease with them sometimes. And... Oh, my goodness. So let's not preference a stronghold of the mind as it's just for females. A lot of men are emotional. Okay? Okay? 
So know how crafty and how cunning Satan is. And if you go back to Genesis, you'll see his strategy with Adam and Eve. So he's always some type of way is going to be strategic in how he causes our minds to think. It's going to always be a point where he's so slick and so cunning that he slips in sometime without you even knowing it. And if you notice, he'll begin to build up thoughts in your mind. And you're you're coming to church and somebody may just look at you and look back and turn their heads back towards the front. The enemy automatically wants to begin to build those thoughts. They must be got something against me. I often say they've been talking about me. I saw them look at me. I, I saw, I saw, I saw them look at me. And before you know it, now there's a message, there's a word that the man of God, or whomever's up here preaching or teaching at the time, is speaking to you. Now you can't get it. You've lost that part that was so valuable to you because the enemy, slick, cunning, strategic as he did and as he is, comes in and begin to play on your thoughts. Or another way, hold up that little vice, device, hold that up. There it is. There it is. There it is. That cell phone. You are reading the scriptures. And here comes a message. And instead of you swiping that message up, because you said, I'm in the presence of the living God. I need to pay attention. I need to read this word. But instead of you swiping it up, you open up the message. And now here it is, something that's done messed up your whole day. Now you sitting up there trying to get back, trying to get your thoughts back. Emotional strongholds, and strongholds are dangerous. They are death defying. They say, we'll try anything with anybody. I don't care if you saved. How many of you are saved? How many Holy Spirit feel? How many love God and know God? You see, just uh, every hand in here is up. It doesn't care if you're saved, Holy Spirit feel, talking Tom, rolling on the floor, and all the other good things. He said that if I can get the mother of this world, which was Eve, to bite that fruit, then don't you know I'm cunning and clever enough, even in the house of God, to come in and bring some disturbance? He can do it, and he will do it if you allow it. But look look at this. Second, Second Corinthians. Go with me, Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians 10 chapter. Very familiar scripture. We talk many times about this. Second Corinthians 10 chapter, verses 3 through 5. And this is the amp. I'm going to read from the amp first. It said, but though we walk in the flesh as mortal men... We are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of man. The weapons of our warfare are not physical what? Weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses, which is a stronghold. We are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. It says, for the weapons of our warfare, verse number four, are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. So why we as believers fighting these emotions and the mind and the battlefield of mind in the flesh? Why is it that we can't go to God. Why is it that we can't go to prayer? 
Most of the time it's because we don't want to. Because we want an answer that's going to satisfy us right now. We want a right now word. If the preacher don't preach what I want, if somebody don't prophesy to me what I need to be prophesied to, then I don't know what I'm going to do. And all these things keep building up in your mind. All this frustration, all the despair, all the confusion keep going on. But he said the weapons of our welfare, warfare, are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortress. What are the weapons of God? What are those weapons? It's the word of God. It's praise. It's worship. It's fasting. It's being to that point where you said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of being around negative folks that's going to keep pouring flesh and foolish into my spirit. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal. Your weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of strongholds. So if you don't use these weapons, what happens? The enemy beats you down. The strongholds develop even stronger in your mind. The mind can no longer hold all the things, and then it causes a mental breakdown. Because now you're saying that it, it brings me back to a little phrase from Lost in Space. And the robot said, that does not compute. That does not compute. <laughs> and when danger comes, and he starts saying, exactly, danger, Will Robinson, that does not compute. So when your mind get into a danger zone, when the mind begin to battle, and those, most of the strongholds begin to happen, then it can't compute. The body then, the mind can't, it can't take on. Now it's on an overload, and before you know it, your mind is wayward. Come here. Turn around. Your mind, put your hands on your head, just on the side of your head. Your mind, just like this, you get into that position, you're holding your head. I I don't know what else to do. I've done what I thought I need to do. Now your mind is battling. Now the emotions are taking over. Then you sit and you begin to cry. Oh, God, I don't know what else to do. Oh, God, I said what your word said. Oh, God, you know what? They're coming against me. Oh, God, I sat in church and I heard your word, but did you hear the truth and did the truth make you free? And then before you know it, you're down in a position where now you're bowing. Get on your knees. There you go. You're bowing to your feelings. You're bowing to your emotions that it takes you to a place where you don't need to go. And it's a place where you should not have gone because if we say that we are people of authority, if we are royal priesthood, we can't just use these scriptures when things are feeling good. That's where we go wrong. When we begin just to quote scriptures when things are going good, We forget about God, and then we want to hype up the word of God when things are going bad. And now the pressure is on. And then your mind is all entangled. Remember, strongholds or emotions are entangled thoughts. Your thoughts are so tangled up that you don't know how to get out of them. Thank you. So somebody got to get to the point, as we as believers, when you see a brother or sister in that point or to that point of despair and confusion, somebody have to be so selfless instead of selfish, begin to say, brother, I can't leave you like that. Sister, I can't leave you to that point. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pull down. Let's pull them down. So what the word of God said, the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal, they're not physical weapons. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. So if you don't have your weapon, hold up your weapons. Bibles, phone, tasks, whatever you got, hold them up. The word of God is on them. You have accessibility wherever you go. Where we used to lose our Bibles and leave our Bibles in the car, in the trunk. Give me a cell phone. 
The cell phone, we go with it everywhere. And if you forget it, what? you going to do what? You go, what? You going back to get it. Am I right? But look at this spiritually. How many of you will run back and get the word of God that when the weapons of carnality begin to run after you and come after you, how many will run to the word of God? God, this is what your word said. You said that I'm more than a conqueror. I'm not just a conqueror, I'm more than a conqueror. How many of you will run to the word of God for God so loved the world? God, I am love. How many of you will run back to the word of God and begin to read what God's word says about you? But most of the time, that's the last thing we want to do is run to the word of God. You're saying, God, I did that before. I don't see nothing happening. I, I've quoted your word before. I prayed before. But that thing is still there. But you know what? God's not going to overtake your will either. Because you got to have a mind and the will to say, God, I want to be healed of these wacky emotions. I want to be delivered of these emotions that's sucking the life out of me, I need my mind to be covered with the blood of Jesus. He said, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead work to serve the living God? I need to know if you're ready for your conscience to be purged from dead work to serve the living God. I need some honest people on, in here today to say, God, I'm one of the ones that's dealing with emotional strongholds in my mind. I am one of the ones that's running from whatever it is from the past, whatever it is that happened before you got here, that you just won't let it go. That emotional stronghold, the mind has built up all kinds of things in your mind. So it's got you looking back at the past when it's supposed to be what? In the past. And every time you see that person, it reminds you of what that person did. That's an emotional stronghold that is choking the life out of you. Now, you can't treat that person right. You can't speak right words to them. And every time you see them, you want to be sarcastic. You want to be condescending. You want to pick at them. But God said on today, he whom the Son is made free, God Almighty, he said you are free indeed. So I need to know if there are some people that are free indeed. I need to know if God's word is guaranteed and assured you that when it gets inside of you, it's going to free you and there is no doubt about it. So if you're one of the ones that need to be healed of emotions and the mind and the strongholds need to lose its grip, I want you to pop up like popcorn and I want you to declare... begin to declare over yourself that I'm hearing the truth and the truth has made me free and when you know the truth has made you free you need to celebrate being free when a person is free they are excited Woo! when a person is free they said no more chains no more bondage nothing can hold me back that I got to praise and I got to get it out I got a song and I got to sing it I got a worship that cannot contend you better know that God is a deliverer God is a healer God can break what the devil said can't be broken. God can make water in a desert place. So if you know that God is bigger than your problem, bigger than your mindset, bigger than a stronghold, and if you think the stronghold is greater, God said greater is he that's in you. Greater is he that's 
within you. You need to let the greater stand up in you today. He said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. God can do anything but fail. You better tell that stronghold. You better tell that mind. You ain't got nothing on me because I know who God is. I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know who God is. I know his son. So instead of you, instead of you, instead of you getting hooked up and hooked up with the devil, you better hook up with your God and you better begin to declare war. You better begin to declare war. So when you turn to the south, when you turn to the west, when you turn to the east, when you turn to the north, you know who you hooked up with. I heard the Lord say in my spirit, this is an unshakable house.